Hello guys, I'm Nick and uh, welcome to this new video. Now, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can turn a very old laptop into a CSGO server. Now this video is for people who want uh, a quick uh, access to a server, maybe for trying out new skins uh, and also for trying out skins combination. I'm gonna be teaching you that later on in the video and also for people who for example have an old laptop laying around and they want to use it as an experiment they want to try out something new uh, in this example i'm going to be using a very very old laptop that uh, was being thrown away it's an i5 m520 with two cores four threads two gigabytes of ram and uh, just for ease of use i slapped on an ssd but you can also do it with a hard drive you don't have to spend any money and these laptops nowadays are basically worthless, so you can find them in the trash or at your local recycling center. doesn't need to have the biggest of specs. If you're going to have one, two people playing on it, I reckon that two gigabytes of RAM are plenty fine. Usually Cisco asks for around 100 megabytes of uh, RAM for each person that's going to connect to the server. And if we add up that, uh, plus the Windows installation that's underneath, uh, I think that uh, two gigabytes should be fine for a couple of people playing on it. Let's now go ahead and talk about the limitations of this setup. And the first thing is that uh, this uh, is going to be a tutorial on how to host this server in your LAN. So for people that are connected to your home network or to your network. And uh, this is simply because if you wanted to host it uh, outside, uh, I think there's better methods than having a machine that you use constantly and also having some ports open on your router. So yeah, use this uh, tutorial if you want to just use it uh, when a couple of friends come over or if you want to check uh, skins by yourself uh, or if you want to host, I don't know, a 1v1 against your girlfriend and you need a quick server for it. The second limitation is the stickers. I've been looking uh, left, right and center actually at uh, how to emulate the gen command that's on servers like the Onepixel server or the Broskin server. I still haven't found a solution for it. So this server will allow you to try uh, knives, uh, skins combinations uh, and uh, gloves as well. The only thing you're not going to be able to do right now is to apply stickers to the guns. Uh, but it's something that I'm working on, it's something that I'm researching and I'll be sure to make a new video on it uh, once uh, I've figured it out. So as you can see, as an operating system, I've chosen Windows 10 Pro, and uh, it's because uh, basically I'm very, very comfortable with Windows rather than Ubuntu. And uh, also it doesn't need to be activated. Uh, you just have the watermark, which you'll probably never see. And the first thing that I do on a Windows 10 installation is that I completely uninstall and get rid of all of the clutter that's around Windows, so pre-installed programs, background programs, OneDrive, etc. This is because the computer already has limited amount of resources and I don't want Windows to take uh, any of those away. And uh, also I install Chrome for ease of use and also because I hate Edge. Then I'll give a friendly name to the PC so I can connect to it using the name of the PC when I will enable RDP, which is a remote desktop. Then I'll set a password for the admin account uh, that's so I can uh, enter at least with the admin account if I forget my normal password. And the final thing that I do here is enabling remote desktop through the settings, as well as setting the power limits so the PC doesn't go to sleep ever or it shuts off uh, in any way. I also uh, make it so when I close the lid of the PC, it doesn't go to sleep. That's a setting inside of the control panel. And finally, I open IP config to go ahead and grab the IP of the computer. It's important that you set a static IP of your computer so you can always reach it, uh, you know where it is, uh, even if you forget the name, for example. Now that you've noted down the IP address uh, of the CSGO server that you intend using, you can go ahead, close the lid of the machine and store it uh, in a safe place where you know it's going to be turned on 24 seven. And uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is RDPing into the machine using the previously given name and the chosen login credentials that we use for this server. In my case, the name is a CS server and uh, the user is CSGO SRV and uh, well, that's my password. The first thing I do is uh, use the Chrome browser to navigate to the official Valve Steam server page for Steam CMD. This gives you all of the tools that you need to start hosting your server and also a little bit of a guide uh, providing you with tools, etc. on how to get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is making a folder inside our C drive and I'm going to be calling it Steam CMD. 
And this folder is actually going to be the main base or where basically I'll have everything stored for our server. I personally use uh, one folder for everything simply because uh, if I need to make a quick backup uh, I can just grab the folder and copy it wherever I want without having to chase items around. I know that everything's inside that folder and I know that everything's gonna be there when I reinstall it. The next step is to download the Steam CMD directly from Valve's website and extract the package that you've just downloaded, copy the executable inside of the previously created folder and uh, open up uh, the exec that you've just uh, copied inside. You'll see that it uh, installs itself uh, and it starts to decompress all of the files. And when it's done, it will present you with a sort of a prompt. The first step that we need to do is actually tell Steam CMD where we want to install our next programs. And in this case, uh, I wanted to create a, a folder called uh, CSGO, since I'm just gonna be hosting a CSGO server. And I'm gonna be using the command force underscore install underscore dir. And then I'm gonna give it the path of where I want to create this new folder. In this case, dot slash CSGO slash. Now that we've told where all of our installs are gonna be gone, uh, let's go ahead and log in onto the Steam client. And for this, we can just use the login anonymous as uh, we're gonna be hosting a LAN server. We don't need to log in uh, with our actual Steam username and password and get the token for the game. We can just use Anonymous. We're gonna then use uh, the app underscore update space 740 space validate command to tell uh, Steam CMD that we'd want to download the CSGO dedicated server and also we want it to get validated. So once the files are downloaded, the system will go through a check of the files and see if they're all correctly downloaded. Now, uh, depending on the speed of your connection, this can take uh, upwards of a couple of hours. It all depends, uh, again, of uh, how fast your connection is. Now that the Steam dedicated server has been downloaded, I think that a good utility that you can uh, use and that helps you manage your actual server is uh, Steam CMD GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface, and this helps a lot if you don't want to learn all of the commands to use on the Steam command line. It's a free utility, and uh, I'll leave the link down below in the description. You can just go to the website and then use the Dropbox provided download. Then you'll need to extract the files and copy them inside our C Steam CMD folder, as I'm doing here on the screen. Once done, you need to start it, and uh, the first thing you will do is select where actually Steam CMD is installed by choosing the path, as I'm doing again on the screen. And uh, you can just leave the first tab as it is. Navigate to the second tab, and you need to choose the path of the installation of the CSGO server itself. So in my case, is inside the CSGO folder that we've created before. We'll give the server a name. In this case, I'll just choose test. And uh, then you can just choose a map from the provided maps. Set the mode onto LAN mode. And then you can just click run on the settings you'll see the Steam CMD prompt appear and it's gonna start doing its thing. And after a minute or so, you'll be able to connect to your server. Well, how do you do that? Let's now switch to my computer. As you can see, I have CSGO open. And uh, the first thing I'm doing is uh, I'm taking back the IP of the server that uh, I've noted down before. So in my case, 192.168.178.161. And uh, I'm using the normal connect command uh, through the CSGO console. So I'm going to be typing connect 192.168.178.161 and pressing enter. And uh, after a few short minutes of loading, you'll see that I'm uh, in my own server hosted on DE overpass uh, with uh, all of my bots. And uh, yeah, that's pretty simple. That's pretty much it. Now, if we switch back to the server view, where you have the black Steam CMD bar, you can actually type the console commands that you'd usually type, for example, if you want to activate cheats or if you want to kick the bots. So if I activate SV underscore cheats one and then I press enter, I can then switch back in game, enable the no clip function, and you'll see that I'm able to no clip in the air and go around in the server. 
And now this part was just for explaining you how your CSGO server gets set up. And um, in this next part, we're going to be taking a look at how to enable the exclamation mark WS, exclamation mark guns, and exclamation mark gloves commands for your private CSGO server. So completely in peace, you can go ahead, try your skins, try your gloves and knives combinations. Okay, let's now get to the meats and bones of this tutorial. Now that we've created our own server, how do we start playing around with skins, float values, gloves, different knives, etc. that we don't own? Well, it's pretty simple. We're going to need five tools. The first one is called source mod. Then we have meta mod source, P tools and hooks, weapons and gloves. All of these are super easy to find. I'll link each one down below in the video description. Starting with the source mode, you can see I'm on the website, I've downloaded it, and while it downloads, I passed on to the MetaMod source website, I went into their download page, and again clicked on the little Windows icon on the latest stable release. I will now go ahead and extract both folders, and actually MetaMod takes a little bit longer, so you just need to let it be, and it's uh, gonna extract by itself. And now, after the extraction is completed, I'll go inside my... CDisk, Steam CMD, the CSGO folder that we've created to direct the download. Inside there, I'll go inside the CSGO folder again. And here, I'll just take the source mode folder contents, drop them in, and uh, the meta mode source uh, contents, uh, I'll drop them in as well, and I'll let them copy. And now we move on to P tools and hooks. Again, I'm on their website. I download the latest Windows stable release. And I'll move on to the GitHub of uh, weapons and then gloves. And I'm downloading the zip file for both of them. And again, I'm taking each one of these and uh, extracting them manually into their own folder, waiting the time that it takes. And uh, in the end, I'm going to be left uh, with the three different folders uh, inside my downloads. And exact as we did before, I'll open the CSGO folder and I'll drop in the context of each of the three folders that we've just extracted. It's as easy as that. And now once everything has just been dropped in, we just need to change a tiny little detail. We need to go inside of the add-ons folder under source mode, configs, and then we'll find the file called core.cfg. We need to open it with a notepad, for example, and uh, at the end, uh, we need to modify the value that it's called follow CSGO server guidelines that I'm highlighting here. We need to change the yes between the brackets into no. And the last thing we do is just uh, simply save the file. Now, all that's left to do is uh, we open Steam GUI again. We again enter the details as we did earlier, or you can just follow what I'm doing. Uh, follow the CSGO path, uh, change the server name, select the map, uh, change the server type to LAN, and uh, finally we can go ahead and click on run. And so guys, here we are in game, and uh, you can see the first thing I'm gonna do is actually change my AK to a golden arabesque, and I'm just typing, you know, the usual commands, WS, uh, changing the skin, and uh, next up, I want to change the gloves uh, to some uh, Omega's Factory new. And uh, I also want to try a Karambit lore with them. I just think the yellow and yellow combo is really, really cool. And I also wanted to show you that you can change the float value of the skins. For example, this is a Super Battle Scarred M9 Crimson Web that, as you can see, has a single red stripe down the middle. I find this type of uh, M9 super cool, this and also the Ultraviolet. And uh, for the showcase, I also want to, you know, kind of demonstrate that you can change the pattern seed for the weapons. And uh, as you can see, I wanted to have this uh, butterfly knife uh, as uh, yellow as I could uh, to try the mango combo it's called on the butterfly knife. And uh, I can also save it as pattern 6120. And every time I'll actually choose the butterfly knife fade, it's going to give me the same pattern if I want to keep playing with it on the server. 
And finally, I asked my girlfriend to join the server and try out some skins. And as you can see, uh, we're both playing at the same time on the server. Uh, I was a little bit AFK, but I was still in the server itself. And um, at the bottom right, the performance of the server uh, showing that the CPU, yes, it's pinned at uh, 100%. But that's actually mostly because I was recording the screen in the server using OBS, so I was already stressing the CPU quite a lot, but you can also see that the 2 gigabytes of RAM is just quite enough, it was using about 1.5 gigabytes recording and also uh, while two people were on the server, so yeah, I, this totally demonstrates that you can host a CSGO server uh, literally on a piece of garbage computer and this is kind of what this uh, experiment slash tutorial was uh, aiming to so i wanted to thank you guys for sticking with me and we're almost at 110 subscribers if i'm not mistaken i don't quite remember the number uh, so thank you so much for subscribing guys i wish you all a very happy night and remember guys good luck and have fun